Yokeyok Satini, Yohan. Gosh, you two are guests a goo. Ah, gosh, cock you woozy. It was a good quartier, you did. If anybody has any questions, now would be a good time to ask them. I guess I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. I'm on a trip in Yakutat right now. So would the would you say would I say um Yakutate Yakunchatin or I am traveling to Yakutat or is that just for the act of flying there? Yeah, it would be like if you're just on your way. So okay. now say Yakutat Echatyati. Okay. Yeah. You can also say Yakutat Khwatin. I traveled to Yakutat. So extra T in Yakutat. How about I will travel to Yakutat tomorrow? <laughs> oh, you can. Say, Yakutat de Kuk Quatin. So let's I'll start a document here and we'll take a look at uh, some of these differences. So if we look here, so we'll have um, Yakutat. So there's one of the sort of main parts of it, right? And then we're gonna go there. The verb we're gonna use for traveling is kuwatin. Uh, and we're the ones who are gonna be uh, doing it. So here's Yakuta. Uh, and then we're gonna put a suffix on there and then, uh, so this, and let's just do like, um, I guess kind of a time series. Let me turn the spelling off. So you could say, uh, this one is gonna get a day, oops. And then you're gonna say, ya kun ha ten. And this would be, I am traveling to Yakutat. So this is, you're in the process. It's happening now. Uh, and then this is uh, the verb for traveling by boat, plane, car, whatever, right? Um, and so this is, there's specific ones to say walking or boat or car and then flying. Uh, so that's uh, happening right now. Uh, and then you could say, uh, if we wanted to say, put this same verb, so this is, I will travel to Yakutat. And then we put the, uh, we put this in there. I'm gonna make this a little smaller. Yeah, so now we get, I will travel to Yakutat uh, tomorrow. And so uh, the Seqanin, it could, it doesn't have to go first. It could go, so this is one of those kind of naqt eqi things. So I'll say Yakutat dekhuk qatin Seqanin. But these are a thing and this is a thing. So you couldn't, it wouldn't be too good if you said Yakutat de Seqanin khuk qatin. So you kind of want the travel, the moving verb to come right after the thing that says where you're going or coming from. And then, uh, so that's, uh, it's this, and then you could say,
I traveled to Yakutan. And so when you say you went there, there's kind of two different ways to say it. So this one gets a little tricky. Oops, I forgot my W here. So let me put these ones on the same page here. So this one you can say, And there's a slight difference between these two that Shingit does like to mark. So what this T means is you're saying you arrived. It's done. And then this one, uh, you're just saying generally went that direction. And it's not saying you didn't make it, but you can specify whether or not you made it. So you could say, um, and so it, and it doesn't mean that they didn't, but you could say something like uh, they went to their auntie's house and, and then you say, yeah, they left, they went to their auntie's house. But then you say they have arrived at their auntie's house. And so that's what the top one is doing. And so you'll notice, well, what changes in the verb? What do you see different in the verb itself? The last vowel. Yeah. So you've got tin, tin. and teen. teen. So that's, that's how it's going to go, right? And, and so there's, you're going to learn some stuff about these motion verbs where it's sort of like you got to say where, and then it's this T that does it. Ah. That's the thing because it, what you're signaling with this is that it has come to an end, right? Okay, okay. And then all of these have ch in there, which is me, I'm doing it. So I'm, I'm doing it right now, I'm gonna later, I already did, and I did, and I'm letting you know that I, I completed that journey basically. And then uh, this one could also change. Uh, that. That. And that means I left Yakutat. So um, I traveled out of Yakutat. And you can also use Dach for this one and this one. I'm traveling out of Yakutat. I'm going to travel out of Yakutat. But you cannot use this one. And then again, what, what we do at this stage of Tlingit is we just spot these fill in the blanks. This thing right before day can be anything now. So you could say, I went to the store. I went to the bank. Um, you know, you could say, I'm gonna go fishing. So you can also put like sort of like action type of nouns on there as well. Um, I'm going to go dancing, right? And so that's, that's how these work. And so you do have a fill in the blank type of thing. However, you cannot put a person there. So you can't put a pronoun, you can't put a kinship term, you can't put somebody's name there. Uh, but you could, like, we'll just use this one. Um, so what you would have in that case is you would have, like, uh, let's say I'm going to see my auntie. So then you have to put this chan there, which is next to uh, usually a person. So that's how you say I'm going to see somebody. Uh, I'm going to visit them. It's going to be chan. Right, and so, and then the same, and now you could put the day on there. Now, I'm gonna go see my auntie. I went to see my auntie. I went by my auntie, right? And so, um, 
that's just one extra level in case you needed that extra level. So you cannot put these day and dach, you cannot put them on a person, including a pronoun. And so we're gonna look at that stuff too in a little bit. Yeah. Okay, it's Jish. Yates. Yates. Takun yagi e. Takun yagi a ya. Ah, ah. Ya this, okay. Dark ya geese away, ya ya gee. Dark ya geese away, ya ya gee. Dachun ya gee. Ye away, dachun ya gee. Gun cheese, you hum. Ya do a wasa do a sock. Ya this. Yata. Like cock in a hisatin. Dis yadi, you do a sock. Ya dis. Ya do a light cock in a kun ya geese away. Ya wah he. Ya dis. Ya da. Kleka kada kun ya gee ya wah he. Ya dis. Okay. Dark ya geese away. Ya ya gee. Dark kun. Aya, dakun yagi aya ya yagi. So the ya yagi is the today part. Um, do a sock is all. It's you're going to be asking the name of something. What's it called? Uh, and then another fill in the blank. Ya this right. Wasa do a sock yen What's this river called? Wasa do a sock iyagu. What's your boat called? Wasa do a sock iat. What's your auntie? What's your auntie's name, right? So then you also have blank, you do a sock, blank. So now you can answer any of those questions, right? So you could say, <laughs> you do a sock, well, that one's a heen claim. Uh, and then you could say, uh, you do a sock, my daughter's name is Kharqais. And so this one is really good to know so that you can introduce another person or you could talk about them. And then, you know, talking about family trees is, is pretty important. And so we're also going to start looking at kinship and how this could tie into kinship. So I could say, you do saga, no way, so I could say my great grandfather's name was An Kadachzin. It was my mother's father's father. So you could say, Ach Tla, Du Ish, Du Ish. My mother, her father, his father. And that's how you can kind of walk around a, a kinship chart if you wanted to do that, which is pretty important because someone once asked me, like, oh, how are you related to so and so? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. So her husband was my mother's father's father's sister's son you know and so that's how i, I was like that made sense to me um but i could probably do a little faster maybe and think it but and then uh un blank so way how many of those things how many days in this case yawahi is for a day to pass right so this is how we talk about days passing only days so 
You can't use this for weeks or months or years, but this is the preferred way to talk about a day, right? So you could say, and you could, so this is what we call a perfective. So it's already happened. So you could say, in two, after when two days pass, I'm going to go to Yakutat. So that's how you start doing things like two days from now, four days ago. And, and so you could do that, you know. And so if you wanted to say uh, four days ago, something happened. And then you just move, and then you're setting us up for a time. And then you could just say kind of what happened, right? Whatever the thing was. Uh, but in this case, uh, how many have passed this month? Uh, in this case, that was the other day. So now we're at Kekha Kadangun Yaki Yawahi Yadis. This one too, Dak blank so way. Which one of those things? If we're down at the dock, we're gonna get in your boat and go look for a deer. I might say Dak Yak so ai. Which boat is yours? Right? So Dak Yak so way. I might say, uh, which pencil do you want, right? Uh, and so in this case, which day is it today? And then you could say the day, aya ya ya ki, da kun ya gi, aya ya ya gi. So those are our patterns. We're gonna try and do that uh, every class. Just so we're getting used to doing that. When I feel like we've got that down, we'll start throwing the weather in there. Once we got that down, we'll throw moon phases. I don't, we'll have to figure out some moon phases, but maybe we'll do tides. You have to keep your tide book out. Okay, Jeesh, any uh, questions about that? Okay, okay, Johan. So we went through the, the relational suffix or the possessive suffix. So here it is again, this set of rules. It's gonna be an I uh, if there's a consonant at the end. But if there's not a consonant, there's only a vowel, it'll be a YI. It will be, the suffix will be the opposite of the tone before it. So you're gonna go, high low or you're gonna go low high that's that's how it's gonna go if it ends with a w uh then it'll be a u or if it's any kind of u vowel and any g k or x it'll also be a u if it's any of these it'll switch to the voiced pair ch to a j K to a G, back K to a back G, T to a D, TL to a DL, TS to a DZ. So let's go through the examples again, and then uh, we'll try and go one at a time. Uh, I think I'll have to create an order. It's gotta be some easier way to do that. Uh, and I'll just ask you, uh, if you haven't gone yet, just let me know. And then um, I'll show you a picture of something, and I'm going to say, and, and I'm going to ask you a question. It'll just be your turn, and you're just going to name the thing, whatever it is, and tell us our, its name. And it's okay if you don't know. You just say, Klesh Chwasaku. Everybody say, Klesh Chwasaku. Klesh Chwasaku. Klesh Chwasaku. Klesh Chwasaku. Klesh Chwasaku. And the spelling of that, it looks like uh, this. Oh, that's okay. There we go. So that's what it looks like. And that means I don't know. And it's fine. It's fine. And then I'll say, I'll say, do, do you all know? And then if you know it, you'll just tell us. But then we'll go back to the person whose turn it is, and then I'll ask you how to say my 
thing, whatever. And so you're going to put this possessive pronoun onto it, or this possessive suffix, sorry. Okay, make sense? Okay, here we go. So if it's mine, I'll say ach. If it's your, I'll say i. Uh, if it's theirs, a singular they, I'll say du. Uh, if it's ours, I'll say ha. If it's uh, y'all's, uses, I'll say ye. And if it's their, plural, I'll say has du. And this is a pretty handy one. Uh, so basically it's, oops, ah ye. And ah ye is just like my thing, your thing. So for example, if I said, uh, I just might pick up a set of keys or something. And if I didn't want to just use the long word for keys, which is katikha, uh, I could say, e ayige. is this yours? Right? And so, uh, same thing. If someone grabs my keys, I say, take ach ayi. No, that's mine. So that's what all those little seagulls and Finding Nemo, they would say, ach ayi, ach ayige. <laughs> a little longer than just mine, but that's how they say it. So walking through, let's just look at some open words. They end with a vowel. Here's one. Everybody say, saw. 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 Ach, saw ye. Ach, saw ye. Because it ends with a vowel, we're going to put ye. Because this is low. It'll be high. Now let's look at a closed one. Everybody say, keys. Keys. Ach, keesy. Ach, keesy. Keesy. Keys is high, so it's going to end low. And this, we're going to write it as an I, but it could, this ending could be short or long. You could say, ach, keesy. And you could say ach kisi, and it doesn't change it at all. Now let's look at a rounded one that's open. Gao. 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 Ach. Ach gao. Ach gao. 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 Okay. Now let's look at a closed rounded one. Gah, 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 ah, gah, ah, gah, and then this one, any combination of a U vowel, so uh, uh, u, u, o, o, any of them. Plus, and then after that, if you have a G, back G, K, underline K, pinched K, pinch underline K, or any kind of X, then you can also get a U, okay? Anuk. Anuk. Ach, Anuk. Ach, Anuk. And all of these have a voiced set, so it must change. For example, the CH to the J, there it is. Cheech. Cheech. Ach, 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 this is going to become a G. And because it's this O, O, K thing, we'll have a U at the end. Ach, hoo, Ach, hoo, Underline K to underline G. Same thing. O, O, underline K. So that means it's going to be a U. U. Yuk. Ach, yuk. Ach, yuk. 
Yisikuke wasadu saklet hakinakhoa yuk. Cormorant? Ye away, Cormorant. What? I didn't hear? Cormorant, you do a saw. Cormorant. Uh, there's a bunch of them in San Francisco and they hang out with petrels, which is interesting. This raven, <sighs> raven took out both of their tongues. And so I was in San Francisco and we were doing this little kayaking thing in the San Francisco area. And I saw that and I was, went by and they didn't make any sounds. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Because in the story, um, raven named Petrel, uh, he takes his tongue out because he took this fish out of his mouth, right? And so he kind of tricked him because the Petrel had a fish stuck in his throat. So Raven said, I'll help you out. And he went underneath him and kicked him in the stomach and then it fell out and he ate it. But then he didn't want him to tell him. So he had him stick his tongue out so he could get these yummy uh, lice that are on his head. And then he stuck his tongue out and Raven twisted it off. And then with the cormorant, uh, he went fishing with bear and cormorant. And then he tricked bear into uh, cutting off a highly sensitive body part to use for bait. So the bear, oh, cut, the bear cut himself mm -hmm. and bled to death. And then Raven started eating him. And Cormorant said, I'm going to tell on you. Oh, no. So Raven said, well, stick your tongue out. And he did, and he pinched it off. Nine, and that's why neither of them could talk. They could just go, oh, right? And so there's our you. Okay. T to the D, high to low. Keat. 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 Ach, Keaty. Ach, Keaty. DL to DL, low. To high, cake, cake, ach, cakely, ach, cakely. Okay, so uh, T S to D Z, high to low, hoots, hoots, ach, hootsy, ach, hootsy. And this isn't, this doesn't always just show like ownership because you could say Hintak Hoodsi. And that's the name of the polar bear. There's also Askatuyik Kaitli. That's the name for coyote, right? And so you can see that this doesn't always show, it just shows a relationship sometimes. Okay, so that's all the rules. But now here's a couple of extra things. If it ends with a short high vowel, like te, a rock, when you put a suffix on a short high vowel, it will go long and low. So you go from te to ach te ye, and that's something that will happen. And that's why there's a, there's a place on the Chilkut River, uh, there's a big rock there called kuwakan te ye, and that it's te ye, it must, that's, that's just how the language works, right? So there's te, to te ye. If it's one of these things that ends with a, like dana, chita, chita, chasha, una, it will go short and everything is low. So it'll go a ye, chita ye, chasha ye, dana ye. So those, those are a couple of the exceptions to this rule. Ah, shot right. uh, Ah, lita, litai, kasha, kashai, kashai. So you go, shita, oops, shita. I should stay high, sorry, there's a mistake. Ah, sheesh, shita. Shitai. Litai. 
Chashagi. So, yeah, they can only affect those last two vowels, but they will stay short and low. Ah. Any other questions? So, uh, I, I, I'm just trying to remember, and I'm sure we'll go through it again. So, on te and te, te it goes up. But what was the reason why there it goes from low to up when it already started high? Yeah, so if- Because if, over here it starts high and goes high, low, but here it was high and then goes low, high. So what these two are showing you, so if it ends short and high, it will get pushed long and low. And then this thing will then be the opposite, right? So we, we expect to okay. just put it on there and we, we expect to just go high, low. Okay, fine. But now once we put this on here, it pushes that vowel to go low. And so anything that ends with, um, and you'll see this sometimes, right? And then, um, and so then that will push the vowel to go long and low. And then the suffix still has to be the opposite. But this one breaks both of those rules. And it says, this is only for, there's a whole set of these words, chuta, chasha, chita, Hita, uh, una, and, and they're usually like the one that does something, and there's a, it's a verb. The ah words. Yeah, so un is to shoot, uh, hit is to slide, hush is to cut, and so these ones that will push, it will push this a short, keep it low, and then the suffix itself will stay low. So it's just that one's more unusual than the other things. Like this one, it's, they're both just kind of unusual. But yeah, it's just sort of one, one extra thing because think it's always like, that's not, that's not enough. We gotta add a couple more wrinkles. You know, so that's just how the language likes to work. So then we also, we learned about the, the small and the plural. So you can have hit or you get hit and hit this relational suffix comes after that one. So you would have hit, ach, hiti, and it's got to change to a D. But then if I, for Mr. Moneybags, and I got lots of houses, ach, hit, it stays a T because the suffix is now going onto that X, onto that thing. Okay, for example, let's say it's a little tiny bracelet like made for a little baby. So then you could call it kisk. And if it was yours, ach kiski. So again, it does follow this. There's the vowel before it, it's high. So then this should be low. These are some, I don't know why I would own them, I shouldn't. But let's, it's just an example. Kitk, ach kitki. So that does not change to a D because that X is what it's, this suffix is being attached to. So you can have up to two suffixes on a noun. But if you put the kukusani, it, it, it doesn't need any suffix at all because it kind of, it just can't add one to sani. So you would just say ach kukusani, right? Okay, we got all the rules. It's okay if, and, and what, what we do now is we, we learn a bunch of rules and then we apply them. This is a pattern I, I like to use in teaching uh, and it's okay, just throw it out there. But here's, here's the thing you have to keep in mind. Even if you're just taking a guess, if you saw this, you can't say kiski and do this sort of I'm not sure thing uh, that we do in English, right? So if I say, what's this called? You say bracelets, right? And that's how you say, I'm not too sure. But in Tlingit, you can't do that or else you'll mess up. You'll turn this thing into a high tone and it cannot be, okay? But just keep trying, okay? Uh, so we'll just say, uh, we'll just go by a volunteer basis, but please, if you haven't gone, Make sure that you do. So I can count us. There are 13 of us here. So all of us should be 
uh, taking a turn. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'll show you this picture. Tell me what it is. Then I'll show you the name of it. And, um, and then I'll ask you how to say my thing. Okay. Who wants to go first? Ah. Oh. I don't know how. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Tuss. Yeah, oh, well, tuss. So, how would I say my tuss? Ach tuss ye. Ach tussy. Yeah, oh, well. Ach tussy. Awesome. So, that is. And so, this one is short and high. So, this one will be low. High to low, high to low. So, you know, pretty straightforward. Okay. Who wants to do this one? Uh, what? Ah. Uh, and uh, this is also how you would say, like, uh, a significant other who's a woman. If you were to say, ach. But I, how would you say my woman? Shawati. Ach, shawati, right? So that T changes to a D. So we see it in action. Uh, and this is not, nobody's claiming anybody as far as like owning other human beings or anything like that. Because they could say, ach, kabu. You're just saying like, that's my lady, that's my man, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and then you're usually talking about being in a relationship if you say that. Okay. Uh, okay, so this body of water here, what's it called? Do you have it gone yet? Now's the good time. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh. Yes, whoever, whoever said it first can take it. Ah. Uh. And, uh, okay, rich person, Chittidana, uh, that's what we say, Chittidana Ka, um, my lake. Ach, ayi. Ach, ayi. Yep, ach, ayi. Yeah, oh, so we got to keep that tone high, or ach, ayi is just my thing. Ah, ah, ye, my lake. All right, that's my lake. Okay. Yata kwa da sawe. Ye awa. Ta. And if it's mine. Um, ah, ah, te ye. Ye awa, ah, te ye. So then we see that same thing, pushing that vowel to go long and low, so then the suffix must be high. Okay, gonna cheesh. Get the koa, that's the way. Sate. Get away. Sate. Sate. Oops, let me get rid of that. Okay. <laughs> Say. So to say mine. Ak. Say D. Say D. Say D. Yeah, away. Yak A. Gonna cheesh. This one. Hit. Yeah, away. Hit. And if it's mine. Ak hiddy. Ah. Ak hiddy. Yeah, away. Uh oh, hold on a second. I think somebody's locked out. I'll be right back. Oh. Okay. Was ach yet key. Okay. What's this one? I do a weasel. 
weasel knowledge. Who hasn't gone yet? Shukshian. Yeah, what? Nukshian, Achua Shukshian. And if it's mine, Ach Shukshiani. Yeah, what? Ach Shukshiani. Yeah, what? Your cake and cheese. This one. Good. Yeah, away. Good. And uh, if it's mine. Goody. Ach, goody. Yeah, away. Your egg and cheese. T to a D. High. It's going to be low. What about this one? Una. Yeah, away. Una. And if it's mine? Ach, una ye. Ach, una ye. So this is one of those ones where it must, everything goes short and low. Una ye. Ye awe. Yek e gan chish. Who hasn't gone? Yai. Ye awe. And if it's mine, Ach Yai Ach Yai, Yeowe, Yak E, Nchish. Now we got to look at our little fish knowledge. Yatakoa Yao Yeowe, Yao. And if it's mine, Ach, wait. So yeah, see if your if your mouth has to do that extra work. So, <laughs> so here's the W. So the W will all you just switch it, you add a U instead of an I. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so this is the first one that shows us that U switch, but so basically, you're going to make a vowel sound. That's what it comes down uh, to, right? You're going to make a vowel sound. The I sound is what it's going to be. But if your lips are already pushed forward, that I is actually in the back. It's towards the back of your mouth. So then you're, you'll just switch to the one that's in the front. So you go, oh, and then eh, oh, eh, e, ah, as far as where those vowels are located. That's going farther back into the mouth. Okay. Yet a claw, Miss Kuga. Does anybody know this one? I don't know if it's a word we use very often. Take Wasaku. E. So this one, it has that Y ending, which is a little unusual too. So when you're gonna make this E sound, and then you're gonna push into this, a bit of a smile, E. So that's how you're gonna get that, E. So it's not quite like a, uh, the tone changes a little bit just cause you're pulling your lips back, but you're not actually adding another vowel, but it does make this other change. So um, my rapids, anybody? It sounded yes, funny with there. all of the right. e's. <laughs> yeah, that one's a little, but yeah, you'll see this in place e -E -E. E -E. <laughs> <laughs> So if, if there was a place name called like Eagle Rapids, it, it would be Chuck E Y. So that's that's how you, you'll see these in place names. If you go study place names, you'll see a bunch of them. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Has anyone not 
gone yet. I think there's a couple. Yadu Cup. Oh, you okay? New. Yeah, away. New. Ach, new. Ach, new. Yeah, away. And you'll see a bunch of place names. So, Kachanes, new. Chutz, new. And so, here's a little bonus tip when you're making what we call a compound. So, for example, if you said Chutz, new, then that means that brown bear has a fort, right? And you might sometimes, because new is sometimes used for like, um, if a rabbit builds a really big kind of a nest. Uh, there's, there's certain animals that build a large nest on, the... I don't know if I froze, did I freeze? Uh, there are certain animals that build a large nest and they'll call that new. So if you had hoots new as two separate words, that would mean that is the brown bear's fort. But if you put them together into a place name, so this is how we make one word out of, out of several, what tends to happen is every vowel gets smashed to short and low, except for the last word. So this is something you'll see. So if it chakhini would be the eagle's water, chakhini, eagle river. So that's kind of just another sort of thing that you'll see because, and then once you look in the dictionary, you'll find tons of words that are compounds like this. It's just, it's a bunch of things smashed together. It's very common in Klingon. Okay, Yatakoa. Is anybody not gone? Yana eight. Yeah, Yana eight. And if it's mine? Ach, Yana eighty. Ach, Yana eighty. Yep, so you just gotta get that, make sure that T switches to the D. And this, you'll see this AD and Adi. They're in so many clan names because they're something that belongs to a place. That's really how the clan names work. There is a place called Klukach. There's a place called Qanach. And then Qanach plus At, Qanach Adi. Right? And, and same Dak Kleo At, Dak Kleo So there's a set of, there's a whole set of rules that, that go to this and that you'll see. Okay. Yatako. Oh, was there a question? I couldn't hear you. Okay, we'll get, we try again later maybe. Or you could try again now if you want. If you had a question or if you're just trying to say this, but it, the audio wasn't coming through on our end. Okay, did everybody go? Maybe there's one who didn't. That's okay. Okay, anyone want to try this one? We'll open it back. Oh, here we go. Yeah, what? Yak. And if it's mine? Yak. Plus, Kwasaku. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, anybody want to take a crack at it? Ach, Yaku. Ach, Yaku. So, yep. So this W, this W becomes, so any KW will always become a GU, right? Because the, the W is on there, so it's gonna be a U, but then that K has to change. And so that's one, um, yeah, we haven't run into one of those yet. So ach, ya, gu. And then we see this is low, so now this is high, right? Ach, ya, gu. Yeah, well, yeah, K. Okay. okay, I think that's everybody. So. Uh, yeah, we can go in whatever order we want now. So if anybody's feeling confident, uh, but if then if you've done two, then just wait for someone else to get one. Okay. Wasatu Sakyata. Saknain. Yeah, well. Saknain. Right? Some places it's Suknain. Uh, and we make sure we get that KW right in there. We're watching so we see that vowel is high. So what should we expect for my bread? Um, so 
Cheech. Yeah, away. Cheech. If it's mine. Ach, cheech. Ach, cheech. Yep, so we just go that low to high. Okay. Wait, that's what I. Da. Yeah, away. Da, and if it's mine. Ach, da, ye. Ach, da, ye. So we gotta go high to low, right? Okay. Ya, da, ko. Gao. Yeah, away. Gao. Ach, gao. See, ya, da, ko. Ah, ah, gaw. Right, so we get that upward on there. Yuck, a. Who hasn't gone he. twice? Ah, heen. And it's mine. Heen. Ah, uh, and if it's mine? Akhini. Yeah, what? Akhini. Okay. Yatakoa. Hmm. Chachuka, I think your audio is not coming through for some reason. Nishan. Yes, a cook chef. What's that do a sock yat? Ah, cocaine. If it's mine, ah, cocaine. Yeah, well, ah, cocaine. Cheese. Yat a coa. Oh, there's the name right there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a reading test now, it's not a memory test. Nusk. And if it's mine? Ach nusku. Ach nusku. So we see that KW to the GU. I don't recommend owning one. I think it could be your, your last pet. Sock. Yeah, oh, well, sock. If it's mine. Oops, ach, sorry. Ah, uh, ach, sorry. Yep, K to a G. Yeah, da, ko. Sure. Yeah, oh, well, sure. So this is not one of those ones where it'll everything goes short and low. It has to be one of those two syllable ones that has like, you know, una, shita. So it's not one of, so we should expect this one just to follow the standard set of rules. So if this is my mountain. Akshayi. Yeah, oh, Akshayi. Okay. Yat a koa. Tia. Yeah, oh, well, Tia. This one we should expect it to follow that set of rules. The two syllable, the thing that tees, uh, which is to chisel with the flat chisel. And then so we should expect this to just everything goes short and low. So it should end with a ye. So to okay. say it's mine. Yeah, ye. 
Achtiyayi. That's we gotta keep that low though. Keep it all low. Yayi. Mm-hmm. Tiyayi. Okay. Nyatakwa. Wasus. Yeah, well. And if it's mine. Akwasusi. Yeah, well. Is there a single wasus in all of Tlingit country? I don't know if there is. There's, I don't think there's one. I've Tessa. never seen it. I think they have some in Huna, and I think oh. there's some <laughs> in Gustavus. Oh, okay. Has to wasus ekutzeti. Okay, their cows exist. Okay. Wait, the koa. What's that to a sock? Isakoga Yak. If it's mine, Yaki. Ach, Yaki. Yeah, oh, why? So if you said my muscles are in my boat, Ach, Yaki, oh, what? Ach, Yaku Yikt. Yata, that's the way. Seek. Yeah, well, seek. It's mine. Ach, seeky. Ach, seeky. Ach, seeky. Okay. Just gotta make sure, and I don't know if some of us are doing it, but sometimes we do that thing where we're like, I'm not too sure. So you, you turn that thing up at the end. Okay. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. Okay, yet the call. Yeah, Donna. Donna. And if it's mine. Donayi. So all of them will be short. And so this one actually isn't one of those, uh, you know, because usually you have ah and then you have a verb root right before it. And that's not what this, this comes from the word dollar, right? It's dala and haida, uh, dana and chingit. So it comes from the word dollar. Uh, and so, uh, but for, what, for whatever reason, it does follow that same set of rules, as if it were. Okay, let's do a couple more, then we'll take our break. Wait, da. Uh... Kaut. Yeah, I will. And if it's mine. Kaut. Kaut. Yat akhoa. This. This. And if it's mine? Ugh, dissy. Yeah, well, and the picture changed, but I guess we got possessed, so it changed to a drawing. What's that do a sock? Yeah, da. Yeah, well, gonna cheese you, hon. Keshish. And if it's mine. Ach, ke shishi. Ah, ach, ke shishi. Okay. The land or the town. On. On. If it's mine. Achani. Yeah, well. Uh, I thought I had. So here's here's some that um, we could see. So kuste uh, comes from the verb kudziti. In the noun form, it's just kuste. 
So qusti is life. But if you say our life, you say haqusti. And we see it following the set of rules. You put that's open, so it gets the yi, but that's also short and high vowel, so it gets pushed long and low. So we see these and with these words that we probably know, right? And then if and so ha kusti is one, and once you say ha, it's it becomes a really big concept. But you could also say ah kusti, and that just means my life. And, and so you might be saying. Um, that my life is out of control or, or my, I'm going to tell you about my life or whatever. And then on and ha, on me. So once we see this ha in front of it, we should expect the same set of rules to apply. So now that you've got this pattern down, now you can go claim everything. It can all be yours, right? So he was like, that, that's mine. Yuck, eh, yuck, eh. <laughs> <laughs> ach, ach, eh, ach, ah, see. <laughs> <laughs> I can't guarantee it'll hold up in a court of law, but you could say, hey, I know how to put that suffix on there, so I rest my case. Okay, take five, we'll come back and uh, we'll get back into the beginning Tlingit workbook. Cheesh.
Okay. Okay, one. Okay, and give you a name. Aww. Okay. So there was a question uh, in the chat. Um, there is a word for debt or what you, it's basically something borrowed. So um, uh, he's is the verb root for borrowing. So nahits um, at is just like a word for debt or um, uh, something that is owed or something that's borrowed, a bill maybe. So uh, so you see that at like built into the end of that word. And you're gonna see at just built into a whole bunch of words, uh, especially things that end with adi or ad. There's probably an at or like eight, like sate. Uh, comes from sa'at, like the thing that's on the base of the neck. Um, and then so you ducate, ducate is uh, something around it. So um, so you'll, you'll see that at is just built in na'at, uh, at-u. And so there, sometimes there's a different at, but they're, they're all related. Sort of like when you say khat, 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 ach, and, and kha. Right, so, um, and then to say like something is good, uh, that's a good question because there's kind of, uh, there's multiple ways that you could say it. Um, so one, the first one is uh, for something to be good. Sometimes you can use uh, an adjective built from basically that verb, which is ak eh. So ak eh means a good, something so there should be a noun coming after it there's a chukach adi name uh, good father uh, and so you can have that's a it's good dog right and so um, is one way you could say something is good so i would translate as like the good life or a good life uh, then you could say sort of yak and then name the thing so you could say, that food is good, right? And so that's another way. So the aweh just provides a little bit of separation. Uh, the more you speak Klingit, the more you'll just realize how aweh is used. It's used a lot to the point where if you're translating Klingit, sometimes you don't even translate it because it sometimes it's just providing a little bit of separation between thoughts. Sometimes you're just letting people know you're still talking and it's taking a little break. Um, sometimes you're letting people know you want to talk. It might be the first thing you say, like there's a conversation going on. You know, say, oh, what? And then you're just sort of signaling that you would like to talk. Uh, and then you could say, and so that's a verbal adjective. And, and you could do that, or it's what we call like an attributive. Um, and so that's, that's another way. And so would just mean also like good life. So it's very similar to what is doing. And so you'll, you'll see that one used. Uh, so they'll say like um, a strong person or so it's just you just throw, but it's, it's actually pretty relevant because we're seeing like when we see that that thing that you're putting on that second verb it's the exact same set of rules for this suffix that we just learned. It's a different suffix, even though it actually, it might be the same because it does the same thing, right? And so um, you, you might say, uh, it's bad that you laughed at that person. So in that case, I could say, it's bad, it's bad that you laughed at them, right? And so again, so shuk would become shuku. Uh, so 
it's a it's a good set of uh, rules to know because then you can you'll start applying it to other things. Okay, good question. So this is kind of where we left off in this chapter, and, and the second time we run through it for intermediate Klingit, uh, I'm hoping you'll focus a little bit on how to introduce somebody else. Like, could you stand up in front of people and say who somebody is, right? Like if you, if you had a job to do, um, maybe you're part of a group that's hosting something, maybe you're a Nakani. And so uh, if that's the case, uh, you'll need to know how to say these things. So the first thing is like the moiety. Uh, there's really two moieties. Uh, if you go to the interior, they'll call it, uh, in English, they'll call it wolf and crow. But in Shingit, they'll say either gooch or gooch and yeesh. And so even though they'll say crow in English, that's, that's raven, right? And then on the coast, you'll say chalk and yeesh. Uh, and so those are the two moieties. There is a clan that's kind of outside of the moiety uh, structures, those two moieties. Um, then when you talk about your father's clan or someone else's father's clan, um, then you'd say yedi. So you might say ka guantan yedi. And so that's, that's talking about the father's clan. That's, that's really important. So when you hear, like, let's say you're, Chukanadi, and the song calls out for Chukanadi Yetki. It's not you, right? And so it's important that we know that. Like that's the, if your father is Chukanadi, then that's you, and you need to be hooting and hollering and making a big deal about it because you're supposed to really make your father's people feel good. You know, you will when you do that. Dachchan. Uh, so in the context context of like introducing yourself or someone else. Like you don't have to keep saying like ayachat or awehu. Like once we know what you're doing, we'll, we'll get it, right? So if I sit up and I say, then I could just move. I could just go, right? I could just keep naming these things and everybody knows what I'm doing. Uh, and so this is part of the stuff that we also learn to do is when we start learning things like like if we're speaking if you say i'd say like i don't have to do the whole verb pattern we learn how to do these patterns because it's important because we're learning structures but then we're also kind of getting a bit of a classroom language and it's a little bit artificial and as we go through it again sometimes we'll just say Here's another way you could you could answer that, right? So dechan would be um, anything in any clan in your lineage, other than any of your mother's mother's mother. Like that, that's the same all the way up, right? So your your mother's father, uh, your father's father, unless that's also the same as you, then you don't have to say that. Uh, but this is how you start sort of really going through a family tree and a lineage uh, and some of us might not might not know um, there's also this could in, um, would also include like i could say um english because my father's father's father was you know english um, and so that's that's how you recognize people that are farther up but this this is important too especially like your mother's father, like that's a really important relationship. And so you honor that relationship by publicly acknowledging this, and especially if you're in the territory where those people are. Because they'll be like, oh yeah, there's my grandkid. Because now they, now, you know, they can claim. Dakanuku, um, the way this was explained to me is the mother's mother's father's clan. So whatever your mother is, and then you go up to her mother, and then her father would be your daka uh, And that's also, again, a special relationship. So this is made up of actually two parts. So daka is actually one. I should fix that. Um, daka means around the outside. And then nuh is a shell. 
So daka nuku means outer shell, right? And so it's an important kinship term. Uh, and then achdak anuk uchsati. And so this is also showing you a couple different ways to say things. So you could say chone yuchat duasak, or I could say chone aya achsai, whichever one you prefer. Uh, there's no right or wrong there. It's just whichever one you prefer. The first one says, people call me Khone. And the second one says, my name is Khone. A question, if you don't mind. So, uh, Dakunuku is only your mother's father's father or mother, right? Yeah, mother's mother's father. That's what I've, that's what I've been told. So you can't say, like, if my great grandfather was from Dr. Wei Di. I can't say Dr. Wei Di um, if it's from my father's side. It should, yeah, that should just be your Yeah, and so um, yeah, so that because we were really trying to map that out and uh, Ken Gacy, David Katzik helped us figure it out and a couple of other elders helped us to figure it out. Like it's it's just that one. And they said, yeah, it should be just that one. Okay. So then it's not like you don't honor them, but it's just, and that, that would be, so yeah, in this grand, to say you're a grandchild of a clan, if you go up your lineage and they're anywhere up there, now you can claim them as, as your grandparents and go get all the candy you want from them. <laughs> and um, then talking about your clan house, uh, I've heard three different ways to talk about this. So you'd, you'd have the name, so Yechit or Hichichit or whatever your house is, Kit Gushi Hit. Then you'd have Yuduasak Ha Nakahiti. So this word we've seen a couple times, Na. It means a clan or a group or a tribe. Uh, and so, and then Ka is on. And then, whoops, what did I do? Hold on. Now, can everybody still see that? I clicked something, I did something. Hold on. Okay, there we go. And so when we go down to this Nakahiti, then we see the hit has become hiti, right? So we see these things following the set of rules. And so we've probably been saying these things, but now we're just sort of realizing the, the structure behind it. And when you learn something as a second language, sometimes you've got to learn that structure. And it's a bit artificial, it's a bit abstract, it's a bit clunky sometimes, but it helps because if, if you know it as a, you know, just like in English, you don't have to tell kids uh, oh no, son, that's a sibilant ending. So you need to put a peg vowel in there. Like you don't have to tell them that because they just, they get it through listening, right? But so then, um, so here we got another pattern. You do a sock blank. Now we can put any kinship term in here or any English word in there. And then I could tell you what anything is called, right? And so I might say, um, so, so you do a sock at. So you do a sock with giant kelp, right? So you do a sock, giant kelp. Dao, uh, you do a sock, ribbon kelp, right? And so this is how I can keep speaking Klingit and I can just tell you names of things. But then I could also use kinship terms in here. And that could be like, even if I, I met someone and then I, you know, I knew one of their relatives or something like that. Uh, I might say, uh, um, was that your grandparents' name? Was Gushtihin? And then we say, you do sagen, and not everybody does this, but you do sagen means um, they're not called that anymore. So usually once you say that, we, we know that person has passed away. Uh, so you'll see a couple changes. Instead of duwa, we just have d, and then we we have this kw, and this turned to a gu, just like we saw, and then there's an n on there. 
this n means not anymore, right? Okay, okay. Uh, this one, what is, where is your corn? I, I have a question. Uh, Going back to you do a sock and um, you do sagan. Do sock. Um, sagan. On the, um, in the workbook, it's, it has it, ye do a sock. Yes. Yeah, so um, this is something in this second edition that um, I, somebody figures, help me figure this out. So if we go back to you had do a sock right here. Okay. And I hear you and yay all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes I'll, I'll say, go with the way you were taught. But here's the trick. If you say the name first, you should be saying you do a sock. Oh, you're frozen. Oops. Okay, hold on. Are you moving now? Yeah, you're moving. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> did you get all that? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, if you say your name first, then it should be you. But if the name gets separated, you want to say it afterwards or something? Uh, so I could say like Chauncey Jacobs. So there, I, if I put the name at the end, it'll switch to ye. So that's, that's the secret between you and ye, as far as from a technical um, side. And I'm not going to say any other way is like incorrect or anything. But if you look at the real old speakers, you'll see them do exactly that. And they'll say, um, so they might say, uh, what do they call them? I'm trying to think of one of those real fun names. You do a sock away, yeah. But I'm they might say, um, his name, Raven's uncle's name is Yukhisko Kayak. But then they might also say, Yeh kak oe, ye do a sock, yukhisko kek. So it'll switch to ye if they're gonna put the name at the end. Is it a cultural taboo if you were to say your name, you used to be this name? And now they call you this. If you use the word do a salgan, the being the fact that we're talking about people not here anymore, or is it context based? Oh, sure. Like, uh, let's say I was Prince and I changed my name to that symbol. Uh, I could probably say you had to So okay. it doesn't really mean you're dead. It just means that people don't call you that anymore. But it's pretty rare for someone to go through because, like, in thing it's like, if you're if you're like doing big things, they'll keep putting names on you sometimes, right? And so sometimes someone will have three names or four names. And so that's not like we don't call them that other name anymore. So that's pretty unusual. Usually you just you just get a few different you get some different names. Mm -hmm. Right. And so but to say you do Sagan, um if if you said that I might think, oh man, they must have took one of your names away. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you did, but you know, what if it was Nitschka Yatki, you would do the Sagan. Yeah, yeah, right. Because it could be like, yeah, and then you could have a story, right? Like mm -hmm. they they gave me Tukchan Yuchati Sagan. So you could say, you know, I, I washed well, I don't want to be called stink butt anymore. But and so um yeah, so you could, it would be unusual and it would probably prompt someone to ask you what's going on but not if they're nosy they might just you know if they're not nosy they might be like all right then you know okay. yeah okay so uh to ask someone where they're from good ah kwan so where so uh good ah is uh, interesting it's like uh where is it uh so uh, you do sock and Lou Alcindor. Yeah, yeah, right. So you could like maybe you legally changed your name, right? So you could it could be something like that too, right? Like uh, I, I changed my name. Like if I if I legally changed my name to Chone, I could say Lance you had to sock and you get Chone, right? Uh, yeah, Lou Alcindor. Uh, 
Cassius Clay, right? Cassius <laughs> Clay, you sakan. You to us the cook, Muhammad Ali. Ganashish. Ah. Uh. It just reminded me of the fire plate uh, ceremony sometimes when they're mm -hmm. speaking and referring to those people. That's yeah. I wondered. And there are some people who say, well, I don't want to say you to Saga because I still call him that. And I say, yeah, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. So it's also not a hard and fast rule that when someone passes away, we don't call them that anymore, right? I, that's just, there, there's certain ways to signal that sometimes because sometimes those things are hard to talk about. And it's nice to have these different ways to refer to it. Like uh, Chukatin might have been the only one I've ever heard say, Ach ish yi yi. So she said, he used to be my father. And, and that's just telling us that he, he's gone now, right? But mm. it's still her dad, right? And so it's just, it's just interesting. It's a device to sort of uh, signal that because sometimes, sometimes that's a life shift, right? Mother passes away is a big thing. So you, you might use that and then people will know because you might be subtly saying, you know, don't ask where my mom is because it's going to make me sad, right? There, there could be all kinds of reasons you might do it, but then you don't have to, right? You can still say about your grandparent because, you know, gush tahin, you do a sock, right? But then, uh, you know, if, if uh, I want to, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a complicated one, but yeah, it's, um, you get to choose. So the Quan is, uh, again, that's kind of up to you and your clan, right? So I've heard the, some different things about this. And the thing that I've heard is wherever your name is from, that's your Quan. But that could get kind of tricky because what if you grew up and, and you're from Cake and you're Kich Quan, that's what you know. But then you find out your name's part of this larger migration and your name is actually from Prince of Wales Island, right? Then do you just sort of say that that's where you're from and maybe you've never even been there. And so uh, again, so, some of the stuff is highly personal and also it's up to your clan and your family. I'm not gonna tell you how to be, uh, but those are some things that I've heard. And then uh, Quan. And so as far as how to talk about this too, um, I, I guess I've sort of leaned towards this structure and I'm not trying to say other ways are wrong. Uh, but there are, sometimes you hear people introduce themselves and they'll say, ayachat, 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 ayachat. And we do want to move away from that a little bit. Because, um, you know, I, I kind of like away uhan, right? Because we are shkut, uh, we're chilkut kwan, or we're jishkat kwan. Or if you're in the context of introducing yourself, you might just say kwan, and we'll know what you're talking about. Kone aya achsai. People know, they just, they know. Oh, you're Shukachadi from Chilku. I get it. Uh, here's another one. Um, where were you born? So here's one. Kudziti without that W is to exist. Kudziti with that W is to be born. So where were you born? And, and so here, this is just giving just more conversation as well. Like if you want to get to know somebody, sometimes you'll, you know, try not to get too nosy. Uh, but sometimes in the context of a conversation, um, so here you would name the place. So and you'll put this on there, which is locating it in a spot, right? So we learned there's a plural one and they sound exactly the same, but no one's gonna think, oh, you're from the Skagways, all those different Skagways, no, there's one, right? And so once we hear what the verb is, we'll know what that thing is as well. So you could say, uh, um, yeah, you could say, where are you from? And that could launch into all this other stuff. Well, I was born here, then I grew up here. Like, what if you might live in San Francisco, but if you're Shingit, you're probably not from there, 
even if you were born there. It, it just kind of depends because if once you learn Tlingit, you're like, oh yeah, I'm from Chilku. That's where I'm from. And so for a lot of people, uh, where you live and where you're born, but that Kwan is usually pretty permanent because it's a really strong relationship between the people and that specific place. Okay, so then you've got Khatkhutzati. So one of the things to get ready for is identity learning. That's an object pronoun. So we've seen an object pronoun already. So if we scroll back up and we go to uh, asking people's name, wasa i du wasak, wasa i yati. That i sound is you. How are you? What are you called? Where were you born? So that's the i part. And then we see khat, that's me. People call me this. Uh, I am one of these things, right? So we see isati, khatsati, iduasak, khatduasak, iyati, khatyati. So this is this back and forth between you and me, right? So if somebody asks you like one of these you questions, what are you called? I am called this. Where were you born? I was born here. And so we're gonna learn how to switch a verb for that because then we'll, once we learn how to do that, we can say all kinds of things, right? So I could say, I'm good, you're good, right? And then we've got this one, which is, where are you? So there's the I right there. This is the same verb, yati, as being. Wasa yati, how are you doing? Guksa ye yati, where are you at? And then here I could say, um, maybe ak, or you know, I'm not really an ak, that's further north. Uh, but you know, so now you've got a place, maybe I'm in sitka, sitka yati. But this is where we learn like Tlingit place names are kind of specific, right? And Yakdad Echatyati. Where this is and you're just saying where I'm at, where I am right now. This isn't like I belong here, this is where I'm from. Yeah, this is just where I'm at. Okay. Last one for this set. So qiyu is to reside somewhere, right? And so this one, it's a subject instead of an object, right? And we're gonna learn how to spot the difference between those. Cause then it's instead of khat, it's gonna change to kha. So in this case, you know, I could say juno u, Or I could, you know, depends where I live. Hava'i u. Be nice, right? Uh, and so this is a fun one once you start getting into a little bit more complex language and you want to start talking about, um, we were playing a game, uh, guess, guess what animal I'm thinking about. And so you could ask me a bunch of questions and I say, okay, ask me questions about this animal. Then you could ask, where does it live? So this, this verb here has to do with residing at a place. So if you ask me that, then I might say It lives in a cave. Now you got, oh, wow. Now you got to think about bears or, you know, lives in a tree, right? And then for this, for people, this could be just the name of the town. And it's important to know how to say some of this stuff because maybe uh, I'm in, uh, especially in the post-COVID world, I'm in Huna, I live in Juno, but I'm from Skagway, I'm Chilku people, right? So you can, this is all the finer points of a Shingit identity. And this could apply to non Shingit people, right? I was born in Boston. Uh, but a Kwan can exist everywhere, right? They, those are pretty specific, usually to just Shingit. But you could, you know, you could, in that case, switch over back to the city verb. So going up a little bit, 
you could say um, Irish chatzati. I'm Irish. And you could say that in Shingit. Then maybe Dublin, Dublin chatzati. I was born in Dublin, right? And then one of the things that you're going to learn, one of the fun parts of this is all these ones that say chat uh, on there, we're going to watch this. When that chat just disappears, now we're talking about a third person. So I can tell you all about my father, right? Fairbanks, Kutsati, Achish. My dad was born in Fairbanks. Yupik Sati, he's Yupik. Okay. So I, I thought uh, the beginning clinkets uh, from the Downhowers had a bunch of names of places in there. So then I restored that in the second edition of the workbook. So uh, some places have multiple names. Um, so uh, this one, the, the names come from uh, other languages. So uh, Yakutak was a real mixing zone for Atna and Iyak peoples. Uh, so you have Yakutat, Shachayik, and Kashyach. But usually, even if places had multiple names, there's usually one that we commonly use today. And so Yakutat, that's probably the commonly used one here. Shkagwe uh, is Skagwe. Kakwan is Klakwan. Deishu is Haynes. Uh, and it was fun because uh, my kids say they understand lots of Shinget. And we went to Haynes uh, this, uh, late in the summer. And when we landed, I said, De shukre haya ti away ye that. And then um, the oldest turned to the younger and she started laughing. She said, We're at road shoe. So she just kept calling it road shoe. I was like, Yeah, that's pretty funny. Khuna uh, is also called Khuniya or Gaut Ak An. Khuna is probably the most common one. Khuniya, you'll hear people say. Uh, this Niya is something you're going to see in a bunch of places. Uh, maybe you've heard Hinya, Sanya, Nanya, Ayi. That all has this word Nya in it, right? And sometimes you'll hear Yina or Niya or Nya uh, because it used to be probably something like Nya. And then that sound has kind of fallen out of most Klinge. Shitka is uh, Sitka. Ak is the northern part of Juno. Ak is the southern part of Juno and Douglas, usually like getting close to Thane, right? Angun is uh, Angun. Kich or Shekhuan is cake. Uh, so this comes from Mouth of the Dawn. This comes from the village that never sleeps. Sitka is Petersburg. Uh, north, yeah, North. I think North Douglas would probably be, uh, the, the tip of North Douglas would probably be Ak. So I think the Wushkitan had a fort up there. But like the, it, once you just cross the bridge and that it's, I'm not exactly sure where the dividing line is. So, uh, I want them to come at me, kick me out of town. Okay. Kachchanaak is a uh, wrangle. Kichchan is Ketchikan. Shawak is Klawak. Shan Seat is Craig. Day Sleen is Teslin. Artlane is Atlan. Uh, this one I've heard three different versions. So I just put them all in there because I'm not from there. And I heard all of them from people who are from there. So uh, Nadashahini, Natasahini, and Natasahin. Uh, so this would be the water flowing from the mountain. This is uh, something that's probably similar, but just contracted somehow. And then this one is a whitefish. 
Um, this one, I heard Nora Dauenhauer and Ada Haskins talking about it. And so I'd probably lean towards that one, but again, I'm, I'm not from there. So uh, that's another one. And some of these, you'll hear multiple interpretations. I'm not trying to say anybody's wrong. This is just the way that I heard it. Uh, I heard this one from Walter Sobolov, uh, for Teneki, for Pelican, Dry Bay, and then we have the major, the Quan, right? So this is, these are the ones, the states within the nation, the ancestral home of, of people. Atlain Quan, Ak Quan, Daislin Quan, Kashyach Quan, Kunahu Quan. Kenya Kwan, Jishkat Kwan, Kuyu Kwan, Kheer Kwan, Shkut Kwan, Sanya Kwan, Saudan Kwan, Sheetka Kwan, Shkat Kwan, Takjik on Kwan, Tagish Kwan, Tanta Kwan, Taku Kwan, Hudzida Kwan, Hudsnu Kwan, Hunakawu, Yakdat Kwan, Shahayik. Kwan. So Huna uh, is not Huna Kwan. Uh, and the way that was explained to me is because a glacier pushed them out of Siti uh, Tiqi, of that whole area. Then when they went to go back in, uh, it, was, it had been claimed by the Park Service and they weren't allowed to go back to their homeland. So uh, in here is an introduction uh, template. And so I can, what I want to do is sort of pull this out and then have a second page, which will be the introducing somebody template. So you can just sort of, if, if your task was to introduce somebody, you could do that in Klingit. And it's, a, it's actually a pretty easy transition. For most of these, you just pull the hut right out of it and then you're fine. Um, but so this just sort of puts everything, a lot of the things that we just looked at onto one page. So there's these sections and sometimes you can kind of pick one. You don't have to say both. Like, so you could say yuchat du asak, or you could say aya achsai, whichever you prefer, but you don't have to say both of them. And then you just sort of move through, and that's one way, and it's not saying it's the only way, it's just saying here's one way you could do it. Okay. So then we move into this section where we're sort of, um, we're looking at what happens when we start changing some of these pronouns, right? So we said, you could also say, which is really usually just a classroom exercise. Although someday I'll write a thing at soap opera and someone will wake up from a coma, like they can't remember anything. And then we'll have to put their life back together, right? It'll be so fun. Uh, so then you've got, well, it might not be fun if anybody's ever had to do that. But you do a sock is how you would say your name is. And then But again, like you could just sort of, we're using this as an exercise, right? So here's the isati to khatsati. And then it switches back to isati. So I could say this. And if we're teaching kids, if we're teaching people, there's a lot of people who don't know their clans, and that's nothing to make fun of because it's it shows a fragmentation in our identity. Everybody used to know this stuff. And, and there's lots of people who they might have been adopted out. They, they might have grown up in a situation where nobody talked about this stuff anymore. They, all kinds of stuff goes on. And so we, we got to be sensitive as we're teaching this stuff and figuring it all out, right? And then so here you might tell someone, 
Deshitan Chisiti. Right. And maybe we're doing, you could do this playing a game or something, I don't know. And then you could say, uh, now we get that list of place names. You're in Sitka. And then we switch to a third person, right? So now it's not I or Chat. There's nothing there for the third person in these examples. What's that person called? Right? So then, and a thing, it could be a thing as well. Wasad do a sock, motorboat, klingit chinach. Wasad do a sock, table, klingit chinach. So now we can, and then that's just asking the name of something. Wasad do a sock, yeet. What's your son's name? What's your son called? Right? And then you could say, you do a sock, right? For that person, Jimmy, you do a sock. Same thing, we did this with Dak Naksa Chatsati, Dak Naksa Isati, but then was nothing there, Dak Naksa Sati. What clan are they, that one person? And then here, Kagwantan Sati. Oh, there's an I in there. What's going on? Okay. Guksa Yeti. And you could say, Washington, D.C., where are they? That one person. So then what this showed you is like a set of patterns, then it changed them, right? So what if I was asking you about myself? What if I'm asking you about this other person? And then from there, you can actually put together the third person introduction, right? So you could start right here. So let's say here's this person I was introducing, right? So I could say, Right there in Skagway. Okay, anybody got any questions? Everybody okay? Okay. Okay, so this is designed to be like kind of a, just a quick walkthrough. Ah, Christine. I just had one quick question. And so this second version, and I know you said it was going to print soon. Do you, it hasn't gone yet, right? No, but you can get an electronic version of it. Yeah, I have that. I just wanted to know. Thanks. Yeah. We're, we're in the final review now. So I just got a bunch of notes back and they probably cut this thing. And there's another error, shucks. Okay. So yeah, if you see anything, just let me know. But yeah, it should be soon. I'm gonna try and crank out those changes this weekend. Thank you. Ah. So when we started learning these pronouns, we did these sets of three, right? Chet wa e hu. Ach i du. Then you have when you get to the objects, the verbs are a little bit different. Chet e sometimes zero. So nothing, and then sometimes ah. Uh. So that's a tricky concept, right? So for example, if you said, I'm good, you're good, good. That's how it would work for that third person, right? Instead of she's good or he's, it's just good. I am, people call me this, people call you that, people call them, right? And, and so like the, even the them is not even there. Right, I had, it just fell out of my mouth because it's English, right? And then for the same thing with the subject, I did it, you did it, did it. So it's just, there's nothing there, which takes a little while to get used to. I think your brain wants to put something in there because in English, something has to be there, right? So instead of she walked down the road, you just got walked down the road. And that feels incomplete. If I grew up speaking English, it feels like I'm, I'm not adding what I need to put in there. But that's how Klingit works, right? So then what we're going to do is pluralize these, right? So when we pluralize these, now we've gone from me to us, you to you all. That single person, they, to the plural they, right? So then instead of chet, so everybody say, 
Add another finger or however many you want. Wuhan. Wuhan. Yuhan. Has to. Just has. Just has. Has. Wuhan. Yuhan. Has. Wuhan. Wuhan. Yuhan. Has. Has. Wuhan. Yuhan. Has. So these ones, again, these are called independent pronouns. They're really only used to say where, where someone is for just to make sure that you, we know that that's who we're talking about, right? Yeah. Like this one, Yuhan, that's used quite a bit to open up a speech. To cut Yuhan. And that's just, all I'm just saying is, every one of you, just to just say, I'm talking to you. It's really just trying to grab people's attention, right? And so, Wuhan, Wuhan awa, shukach adi, like us, the shukach adi. Then I'm going to tell you maybe a, a speech on our behalf or whatever. Gukhsach um, Wuhan, uh, where are you guys at? Right? Yadu Wuhan, we're right here. But outside of those things, like saying where they're at with the with the ya do, we do, you do, or just specify, like that's who we're throwing. Was there a question? No, sorry. Okay. No worries. Uh, okay, so then the possessive form. So we just did ah, we just owned a whole bunch of stuff. But now we're going to share it. We're going to make it ours. That's even better. Our money. What are we going to buy? Okay. Um, so then we go from ach, i, du. Everybody say that one. Ach, i, du. Ach, i, du. Ach, i, du. So now to pluralize. This means ha. Ha. Ye. Ye. Has to. Has to. Ha. Ye. Has to. Ha. Ha. Ye. Has to. Ha. Ye. Has to. Ha. Ha. Ye. Has to. So in the context of like talking and speaking and Let's say we're at some cultural event and people have their at u out and there, there might be occasions to talk about that stuff. The cut you han, ye at u, a wah was a teen. A tu nach away ye shish ko has, tu o ya, ha in has u keen. Ach tu u ye ke dat. So all of you, I see your at u there. Through it, I see your ancestors. It's as if they're sitting here with us. So there, there's different things like that, right? So you could say, And we were on their land, right? And then I might t tell some story about that. So the, yes, yeah, so uh, Kash brought up a good point. The independent pronouns are the only ones that have high tones. And they all have high tones. Chat, wa eh, hu. Those all have at least one high tone in there. Uhan, yuhan, hus. All the rest have, are all low tone. Right? So, ach, i, du. Those are all low tone. Ha, yi, hus, du. And so, this hus, du is only for those possessives. People love to throw that into a verb as like right here or something. Like they'll say, they'll say like, has to yuk a, and it just doesn't, you know, and so like in English, instead of saying they are good, it'd be like, you're saying, um, well, I guess that one doesn't work. So instead of saying he is good, you're saying his good, right? So as when to He's use good. the du and the has du, for these ones to talk about a third person, it's only when you're talking about something they own or they're, 
they're related. Okay. Yuck. Hey, Johan. And we're, we'll get to these ones, the objects and subjects. I want you to see them, but you, it, those ones, they make a lot of sense once you start using verbs, right? But same thing. Mm -hmm. So I said, uh, I'm good. You're good. She or he is good. We're good. Y'all are good. They are good. So uh, we're going to do some work over the next couple of weeks, really drilling these things. Um, th these ones, you know, it's, it's sort of like you got to add three more to those things. It's mine. It's ours. It's yours. It's y'all's. You're froze. I wish the internet unstable sign could come on when I was unstable. <laughs> but yeah, oh, I guess we just need to learn. Um, um, utletich is uh, you're frozen. Just yes. say utletich and then I'll just sip some coffee and stare at the wall and count sheep and sing it. <laughs> okay. Good cheese, everyone. Uh, let's try um, over the weekend, try and put together about four sentences that just says something. Whatever you want. And there's no, it doesn't have to be some huge story. It just could be. Uh, uh, I ate some bread, or just whatever, whatever, whatever you want to say. And if you want to use pictures to help, that's fine. Um, I just want to see where we're at in terms of putting some things together. Uh, no pressure, no grades, no judgments. Just, just to give you something to do. Could you explain to me two one more time? Which one? Two. To you, bottom right. Oh, that's us. We are doing it. Oh, like who to art? Yeah, what to ah? Gucci's finally. <laughs> <I>. <laughs> that yeah. makes sense now. Yeah, so we're gonna drill that one. So yeah, so haha, <laughs> I'm eating it. Icha, mm -hmm. you're eating it. Mm -hmm. Aha, she or he. Let's do at right. So at haha, <laughs> I'm eating. At icha. You're eating. At ha. She or he is eating. At tu ha. We are eating. At tu ha. Ye ha. Y'all are eating. Ye ha. At ha. They are eating. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to learn how to switch those. And then it's sort of like learning which sets to move, right? It's almost like there's a wheel. You just got to turn that wheel in your brain. And you just gotta remember which things are on that wheel. So what I'm gonna give you all is some, uh, some cheat sheets and, and it's fine to just look right off the sheet to start putting this stuff together. And so when you're doing stuff like four sentences, do what you can do, right? Like it's, it's okay if they're really easy sentences. If I say four sentences, don't go find like a haiku and be like, well, there's three sentences. So I'll just add, don't do like poetry translations don't try to do something super complicated. Don't try to link a bunch of things together. Start small, but where, wherever you're at, just try and push yourself a little bit as well, right? Don't, you know, if, if you're at a point where you just got to find four sentences that we just went over and those are your four, that's okay. But try to push yourself a little bit, but don't, don't push yourself too far. Okay, Gulchish, see you on Dekhya Geek Aya. Yeah.